Yep. Go for it. We'll call the regular meeting of the New Alm City Council for June 2nd, 2020, 4.30 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is public notice, which we'll skip over that one. Go to item number two, consent agenda items. What's your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve the consent agenda items. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on any? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 3.1, general license renewal for 2020 to 2021. It's tobacco, firearms, kennel, mechanical amusement devices, sheep, solid waste haulers, and tree service. So move. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Just a quick comment before we move on. I think I bring this <clears> up <throat> every year, every other year, that when I was looking th over these and I was looking at our solid waste fees and how we compare those to other fees it just seems like there's a huge difference that doesn't seem really fair like if you own um a garbage business it's like a 150 dollar fee if i remember right and but yet we charge a hundred dollars for a fireworks license that's just a small little business to me, they just don't seem to weigh real well together. So I, I'd like to see us this coming year take a look at our fees and, and before next year, leave them fine for this year. But I just think that maybe, again, we do that comparison with other cities. And um, I, I just want to make sure we're being fair to our, <coughs> our taxpayers as well as our businesses to um, assess the right and correct amount of fees. Thank you. Any other discussion? See you none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 3.2 liquor license renewal for 2020 to 2021. Starting July 1st, 2020, ending June 30th, 21. I'll offer a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on anything? Uh, just one quick question, Mr. President. I noticed there that, okay, because of the late submissions, so if those are all right, approving those two, with those two late submissions? Still, still in review due to late submissions of the applications. George's Stakes and the Cypher Bianchi Post, were, those come out okay? We're approving those also. Yes, and, and, and this will all be contingent on getting the required documentation okay. uh, for everything. And there, there will be one more at the next meeting coming as a really late submission uh, that you will be approving for, for liquor license. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And we took care of this at last <laughs> meeting, correct? So if those bars that are not opening right away, let's say they open up in July, that would be reduced by their license, correct? Yes, we will be looking at the, the prorated rent, okay. or prorated rate. Right. Right. Thank you. I just want to make sure that was clear. Any other discussion? Mr. President? Yes. Uh, Roger Hippert, City Attorney. Um, I had um, been aware of the, uh, there's an addendum uh, to consider, which is uh, an extension for one of the existing licensees uh, into the patio area, and I understand that will probably apply for the balance of the license, but we don't know how long you know, the shutdown is going to go on for. It could be after July 1st, where they cannot go into the structures that are licensed. Um, it's a broader question. I'd emailed the council to try and put everyone on notice. Um, my request would be that the city for sidewalk uh, patio license extensions reinstate the previous requirement that was originally part of our patio policy that the sidewalk areas be uh, somehow fenced off and I think this is really an important consideration and the council can do this one of two ways if you would want to do it. Uh, one would be for each of the licenses that would be approved that the patio extension would apply to. It would be conditioned upon them installing a fence 
a temporary fence that would be approved by the city. And what, you know, what would be required would be anything that would be meaningful. This would not have to be, you know, a really solid steel structure would be whatever the licensee, you know, would propose. Uh, frankly, even something like a theater's use with a pylon and, you know, ropes or something would probably be sufficient because the problem is that the areas are not designated, they're not marked, and I don't think that they are always being adhered to. Every community that I've gone to that's got this type of arrangement has got some sort of barrier in place. And I think it would be just wise for a number of reasons to do it. Now, I provided everyone with a copy of the original policy which required the fences and the change that was made in 2010 when the fence requirement was removed and that apparently was due to the then mayor's concern about problems watering hanging plants. Um, considering the need for fencing versus interference with periodic plant watering, um, I think it would be wiser to have the fences back in place. So if the council would prefer to take this up as part of just an addition, putting it back into the written policy guidelines that we have in place for patios, we could probably do that at the next meeting as an agenda item. If you would prefer to just do it as a condition to the patio licenses granted to each of these applicants, you could do that as part of the motion approving them this afternoon. So if you have any questions about this, please let me know. But I really think this is something that would be very appropriate to do, to be consistent with other cities and to try and make this arrangement work better. Thank you, Roger. Anybody have any questions, concerns? I guess the only comment I got is I don't want to see us get too carried away and have it an expense for the businesses to come up with to build a put up a fence because this is going to have to be something that's going to go up quick and come down quick depends on what we decide tonight you know because if you're going to just put it up for a day or two i don't know all right i mean i think most of the most of the licensees that would be having a patio license are going to be using this uh and again i don't know that it would be very expensive to get a couple of pylons with some type of chain or rope, you know, that would uh, you know, at least designate where the areas are. With respect to the items that are coming up on the agenda later in this meeting, uh, the directions from the state of Minnesota are any of these extensions that might apply outside of the buildings uh, the instructions from the state are they are supposed to have appropriate uh, barricades, boundaries, fences that would designate the areas. So this is online with the way the state of Minnesota is seeing how they should be operated. Uh, and I think if you've seen other towns where they've got it set up, I saw it on Highway 15 uh, in Gaylord. Um, you know, there's other places when they're doing this they've got the fences in place. And for big areas, they're using snow fencing and things like that. They don't need to do anything that elaborate. And it wouldn't be a real big expense. But uh, this is something that I think we really need to consider because otherwise I think there's just gonna be more problems in the future. And right now they aren't even designated. Okay, thank you, Roger. So my question is, is in our, in our current patio law, we don't have a fencing. So people can have, can go outside and they don't have a designated area or how do they set up a patio? So they do, and again, that's part of the addendum. Um, they do have to submit a map and they're only allowed four feet from the front of their building. So essentially one okay. slab. Um, and again, like Roger had stated, there used to be a, a fence you know, or some type of barrier you needed. And then in 2010, it, it went away. Um, all the current uh, 
patios or sidewalk cafes um, that are out there aren't currently fenced. Realistically, it's basically the BNL. Uh, George's uses their sidewalk a little. Um, Lamplighter did apply to use their sidewalk. I don't think they've done it yet. And then tonight you have uh, um, uh, social. Yeah. Social. But they don't. They don't really use it for the alcohol portion, Good eating point. outside. So can they expand out the back, though? I mean, is that? If they have the room. If they have the room, they could put up a patio up the back, and they wouldn't have to have a. A sidewalk cafe, no. They but wouldn't have to have Co a fence. Councilor Fisher, I think some of those things are coming up with the you know, individual applicants who might be looking at dealing with the current restrictions imposed by the executive orders um, so that you know that that's something if they were going to be doing that i'm i'm really mainly concerned about the sidewalk extensions because again right now there's nothing showing people where the areas are they're supposed to be and therefore they're not obeying them uh, and even if you were to draw lines on the sidewalk uh, I'm not so sure that that's a really effective way of doing it. Right. I think, again, if we look at how other cities do this, it's just kind of the way that it's done. And it doesn't need to be, again, a fence, fence, wood, metal. Uh, I think as long as there is some type of barrier so people just know where they're supposed to sit or stand, that's all that would be required. So basically, Roger, let's go back to our original policy in 2010, and that's it. That's what we had, the rule. That would, and that, that would take care of it. It just indicates generally it's not something that's six inches high, doesn't have to be eight feet high, just something in that range. And I think if they would just, you know, run it by Elwood or, you know, by the city manager, it's not going to be anything that's going to be a, a big issue. A phone call would do it or, a, you know, sending them an email. Just, okay, you know, this is what we need to do. Here's what we've got. Is this going to work? I guess I would support that at this point in time. You know, let's just get people open and, uh, you know, not have any more red tape and move forward and Agreed. adopt the, the 2010 back. And So could you just do such a thing as simple orange cones and tie a rope to each one? And yeah. Just, yeah. We are, we're talking more than sidewalks. Yeah, we're this talking. is no, they have a four-foot, if they have the sidewalk extension. Right. We're not talking uh, what's later on here right okay my memory serves me right we went from fences to no fences. painted line on the sidewalk to kind of nothing correct mm -hmm. correct yep. um and we did that primarily as roger said because of the watering people on every single morning those fences were getting in the way and they had to move them all the time and and it's somewhat worked we haven't had a lot of issues i know roger might disagree with that but um, by and large, as far as I don't think we've ever had a citation. I don't think we've had other issues. I think we tried counselor, a simple. Counselor, there, there, there absolutely have been issues, all right? I mean, I, and I, you know, if you want to at some point, I can explain all the various situations that have arisen. Um, so, yes, this, this is a problem. So I guess getting back to my question, this has decision here has nothing to do with what we're going to do later. No, right. this is purely just the sidewalk cafes that are okay. that are that are out there. Right. All right. The current ones, the current. current ones, and the potential future the one correct. on the addendum. Yes. Yes. That we have been doing for ten years. Yes. This without, way. Yep. Um, and okay. Yeah. So. Well, right, I, and there have been several years of problems. Um, what, and again, the two ways the council could do it is if you add this as part of the action you're taking to approve the new licenses, it would go into effect with the new licenses. Uh, if you wanted to wait, then it would be a condition of them receiving the patio license. If you wanted to add it back into this written policy, uh, we should probably do that the next meeting because that's not formally on the agenda for you tonight. If you would prefer to do it that way, I'd prepare the action form so you could consider that at the second meeting in June 
uh, if you want to do it that way. Uh, frankly, one concern I've got is that uh, going forward with the policy that we did in 2007, I mean, that was a good idea. It sets forth a lot of you know, detail to inform the owners how they're supposed to be doing this, but I don't think they know about it. I think we've had new licensees, new owners. I don't think people know it's out there because it's not in the city code. I guess my point, I'd rather take our city attorney's advice, bring it up on the next one, bring back the old policy, it's black and white, everybody knows it, and we're done. I agree. Yep. I would then agree. we can see what it is. And right. I agree. I would agree, and I'm just going to state, you know, because we're going to be later on in another discussion here further on, we're going to be outlining where they're going to be fencing in possible street areas, then there's no discussion. Correct. You know, they're, mm. they're, they're defined, <clears throat> and we're moving forward. So if Roger would take the opportunity and draft something up for the next meeting, and we move forward. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roger. So do we have a motion and a second on this one? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Are we going to take that with as a condition? with the conditions recommended or for the I whole think you just bring it back. Just bring it back. Right. <clears throat> Any more discussion? See none? All in favor say aye. 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 Those no? Motion carries. Item four point one. Revised task order number two thousand fifteen dash fifteen for airport engineering services. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, City Council Members. Uh, Joseph said I'm interim city engineer. Uh, the action item before you today is to uh, revise task order number 2015, uh, and that should be dash 05. Uh, this task order is for engineering services uh, for the airport uh, uh, tax, <coughs> taxiway uh, Hainer pavement rehabilitation project. Um, with the award of the base bid only for that project, um, with the ad alternate not being included, it reduced the uh, engineering services fee that will go to Mead and Hunt for this project. And that would um, reduce the amount to that $79,319. I'll move it. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5.1, new business, city hall roof replacement. Chris? Um, this has been an, an issue that's kind of been going along the, the for a while. The roof has been leaking um, fairly frequently, and when on windy days, uh, wind is blowing through and actually raising the rubber membrane off the roof. Um, creating more uh, of a problem. And so we're looking at potentially just replacing the roof uh, instead of repairing it. Because um, if you look at it now, it's about 12,500 to repair and about 60,000 to replace. Um, this would be coming out of the 290 fund and we'll get better, a better useful life if we replace it instead of repair because you'd just be drilling holes in it, putting rubber stops and screws, just causing more areas for it to penetrate. Um, we notice it after it, when it rains uh, up in the administration side of things, the tiles are starting to get a little spongy. So uh, I think it's time uh, to replace the roof. It's lasted about 24 years. I guess my, good to me. my question was, is where did this fall? We did this whole roof study uh, um, how many years back and where did this fall as far as replacement? Is this we, about the time? Oh, or? Uh, oh, you, you can. So, th I mean, this pretty much falls in line. I mean, a useful life out of a roof is between 25, you know, about 25 years, and we're pretty much there. So, um, you know, it might be a year early, but it needs to be replaced because it ver left a very musty smell inside City Hall um, the first rain this year. Because I I'll comment on that. I do remember roof, spec roof specs inspection of it, and we're within about six months of that replacement, their projection of it. Okay. And I too yeah. would rather see than a band aid fix for twelve thousand, yeah. buying yourself five years, mm -hmm. and then it's sixty eight thousand. I'd rather. Right. I'll move it to go ahead. Did I'll we? Yeah, um, just go for ahead. discussion. Did we have this planned? I mean, were we planning next year at all, or in our time frame for our buildings? You know, with our. I thought we at one time we were kind of having a schedule or you know an outline. So we could keep one of those of items that came out of the presentation from Rospec. However many years ago we did it, our timeline on it, and that's when the other 
previous finance director, we sat down and set those fun, started building those funds for that. We know that this is okay. coming. Okay. Yeah. We had the, we had the, even had, we even had the rough projections of the cost. I'm surprised that if I remember, City Hall was actually more than that. So yeah. it comes I was going to ask that. how strong that sixty thousand dollar projected figure is. Well, we'll see when it, we're, this is actually to go out to bid for that. And it's a rough estimate that that Elwood got when he right. he placed a call. Um, so this will be going out to bid to see what that actually is going to cost. Um, but again, this is this will come out of the two ninety fund, which we put in money specifically for these for these items. Sure. Yep. All right. Thank you, Chris. Yep. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Do we have a second? Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 5.2: Accept CARES Act grant offer for the New Orleans Municipal Airport. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, City Councilors. This grant is uh, part of the federal <coughs> stimulus package, um, CARES Act uh, funding, um, in the amount of thirty thousand dollars for airport purposes, maintenance and other items of the like up at the New Orleans Municipal Airport. Thank you. Any From questions? what I see, there's no match. Correct, there's I no match. To bring that up to it's four it's years to use it. This is a good crap. It's no cost to the city. You don't, yeah. well, there's a cost, but there's I'll no cost. The, I'll go ahead and offer the resolution to waive the reading, accepting the grant. Offer AIP 327-0070-01, Dash 2020 <laughs> from the Federal Aviation Administration, the amount of 30000 for airport purposes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more to offer uh, the resolution? Waived reading. Any more questions, concerns? Seeing none, <coughs> Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 5.3 additional transfers up for the 2020 Utility Street and Alley Improvement Project. Cool. Okay, counselors, this um, this came up as a result of um, the actual cost for the projects being over the estimate for the year. Um, there's a requirement when you bond that 20% of that bonding has to be recouped through assessments. Um, when we planned for the capital projects for this year, we were right at that level, and it was tight getting to that level because there's not enough accessible projects within this year's projects. Um, and then the cost came in higher, and it threw that balance way out. So in order to be able to bond for those projects, we have to keep the bonding level lower than what we had anticipated, and we'll have to kick in some additional funding for that. So what happened is we ended up being off by like $815,000 within the bonding requirement. So we are proposing to eliminate the, all of the engineering fees, the internal engineering fees, which is about $390,000, and then using 275,000 of fund balance and then taking an additional, taking the 200,000 that we plan to contribute to the 290 fund this year out of there right away this year. So it will have an effect on fund balance. This brings us down from about, uh, we're just over 60% actually, now that I have some of the preliminary 2019 audit report. Um, and it brings us down to about 53,000 at the end of 2020. But we, we talked with bond council and we talked with our bond advisor and we looked for other options and we had no other legal options. So this was the best that we could come up with at this time, other than raising assessments and, and passing more of that cost on to the citizens. Did you mean 53%? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm sorry, what did I, did I say 53,000? 53,000. So, yeah, percent, sorry. 7% yeah. out of our, wow. Mm. Huh. Because it pulls that revenue out of the engineering fund. So how do we get by without any, any engineering? Cost at 300 and something. Basically, we're eating that cost, and they're not getting that <coughs> payment back from that construction fund. So their engineering department is providing those services without getting any okay. money, money back out of those funds. Okay. So we're, basically, we're just paying the engineer salaries with no, nothing coming back in to, to refund that. And to keep our bond rating, wasn't that 53 and above? 50 and above? 50 above. Anything above 50. We were right. about 50. But it doesn't leave us a lot of cushion. No, because we got a terrible budget it's year coming up. Yeah. My, my thought when I saw this and seeing that big chunk come out of general fund is that if we should take a, a mid-year look at our budget that we budgeted for last year and there may be things that we can proactively do already, projects maybe this year that might be put on hold or 
you know, what's there. Well, and those are things we're looking at, too. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's positions that we're not filling, too, to save money in the salary. So there's things we're doing to bring that back into control in anticipation mm -hmm. of not a great year or of future years not being all that great. Um, so we're working on those things, and we're already working on reductions mm -hmm. for next year's budget. Yeah, so I'm sure you are. I, and then I this agree. does have some advantages, too. It does... Um, it keeps that interest cost down for future because we won't bond as much, um, so it it play it, it offsets somewhat in the future, and then it also helps with the debt levies going forward too. So, so how do we prevent this like next year? I mean, how do we? <laughs> how does that? Go, cool. Mr. President, City Councilors, uh, the main uh, project this year that's um, causing the big increase in cost was our Front Street uh, project from 3rd to 7th South. Next year's list is, um, con I would say it's quite less difficult, um, easier con easier to construct. Uh, the list is going to be a little bit smaller. The other option is we can reduce the number of projects we do next year as well to mm -hmm. keep that um, assessment percentage where it needs to be for us to bond properly. So, Because we can't reduce any of the projects this year to bring that down. Correct. Yeah, everything's under contract everything's already. Under yeah. Contract. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I got to agree with Councilor Fisher's statement because I know for a fact we're going to be digging into some of the reserve if we want to continue services 2021, 2022, and yet. I mean, there's really no other option at this right. point as far, mm -hmm. you know, to pay yeah, for these right, projects. Right. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. And again, a comment to the general public. I mean, like you said, the county is looking at zero. I mean, soon we'll we'll be making that announcement. We're looking at I so too, or yeah, less, or less. Another month we'll be starting budget. So. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. well, we're working on budget already, and we have instructed the department heads to come up with at least a five percent reduction in their budgets. I mean, there's some costs that we can't control. There's overhead costs that will go up that we have absolutely no control over. But we are seriously looking for those cuts going forward and i think everybody is i think everybody's conscious of <clears throat> that the road ahead is probably going to be a little bumpy correct so. all right thanks steve thank you hey, not steve uh, <laughs> <laughs> looks, the same. <laughs> no. looks the same looks, looks the, the same, same. Oh. <laughs> god that's an insult sorry <laughs> Anyway, entertain a resolution. I'll I'll offer a resolution and waive the reading to approve the transfer of two hundred seventy-five thousand from the general fund one hundred one to the twenty twenty PI bond fund five twenty, and two hundred thousand from the capital improvement fund two ninety to the twenty twenty PI bond fund five twenty. Second. We have a motion and a second to offer resolution. Waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> Item 5.4 Library donations and memorials. I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, accepting the donations and memorials to the new public library for the period January 1st through May 1st. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. To offer the resolution, waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 5.5, donations to the New Alm Fire Department. I'll offer the resolution, waive the reading, accepting the donation of the fire to the fire department from August Shells Brewing, Fire Brick for Firefighters Program in $1,710. Second. We have a motion... Offer the resolution and a second. Any more discussion? Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, and thank you. Finance Director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carries. Item 5.6, closure of portions of the Minnesota Street. Chris? This actually item is almost moot at this point as pretty much all the businesses have pulled out of doing something on the street. Uh, the only 
business at this point in time uh, that would potentially like to do something next week, not even this week, is Lola's would potentially like to still have their patio available for them next week in the street closer, um, just in case a lot of people want to eat out um, this weekend. They're going to test it out this weekend and see if their current patio accommodates what they need and then they don't need to do um, the additional patio uh, but Joni's uh, no longer wants to do it uh, and then social uh, backed out as well so it really just that small one lane potentially next weekend for Lola's if they choose to go that option and I'll talk with her next Monday or Tuesday to see if she wants to go that route so was there a theme in the people that were I know I was there for that informational mm -hmm. meeting and afterwards there were some of the folks that I had talked to said that they wanted to see how it was going to go for the other folks that said they were going to do it and they wanted to see how it was going to work first so I heard that from some folks and then the other ones I heard that it just wasn't enough time to financially make it feasible so I don't know what what you heard it was, it was the financially feasible yeah. portion when they did the math after you know the meetings they did the math and were penciling it out the things they potentially would need to have to set that up and having 50 you know patrons you know, maybe per hour per every two hours it just didn't pencil out at the end of the day um, and so um, Lola's again will have their food truck out there they'll use their initial patio and then I would just ask that we potentially keep the street closure for that one portion first to center um, available in case they do want to do their outside patio if, if they do get a crowd that wants to sit outside so and it would only be one lane. then chris are we are we making it too hard for our yeah, our right. businesses uh no obviously we are if nobody's willing to do it it's not that it's too hard it's the guidelines we have to follow by the governor we had to have they had to have it fenced off they had to have 50 patrons only and it's just the numbers don't work out you know again i think you know again this is more personal um you know uh, opinion at this point i think when the governor was really looking at you know 50 people he was looking at your green mills of the world places that already have patio okay. capacity not looking at your downtown restaurants and, and businesses that potentially have to construct a new type of patio you know um, you know we were willing to work you know the barricades were being donated by m and r paving to close the streets we were going to set everything right. up um, you know michael was willing to look at doing you know getting the snow fencing being the point of contact and you know the tape for the tables and chairs being the point of contact and then you know billing everyone accordingly if they wanted to participate um, so you know we tried to make it as easily easy as humanly possible to to do this um, for the community but I think um, you know this is something that we will look for you know down the road in the future um, you know potentially looking at you know closing Minnesota Street maybe one Saturday a month or something like that to have some type of event that really I think is what the business owners were looking for more of a festival event type thing but the constrictions that we had from the governor just didn't make it make it that way and I am glad, I mean, not knocking our governor, but it, you stress that these were actually state mandates, not city of New Orleans mandates. Yeah. So the general public knows that. Yep. Is there anything we can <coughs> approve tonight that should somebody change their mind? Um, again, that, you know, the, the street closure that's mapped out, I mean, if you wanted to technically approve what's there, it gives Joni's, Lola's, and social the option if next week weekend they said hey i want to try this that ability is there um, again the next item will show a lot of the restaurants and bars downtown are just going to do it out in their back patios and that's kind of was the other um the other side of it is the street closure you know more from the street being closed everyone being on the street to then some restaurants doing it out of the back patios and only a handful of restaurants and then so that's why it turned to one lane instead of both lane closed uh and things of that i nature. did hear from a few people that said if the governor turns the dial as he says mm -hmm. and allows restaurants to be open for 25 or 50 percent capacity mm -hmm. and they could use the street then they might consider it so i hate to just shut it down and then we all have to start all over again so i don't know if it's worth approving or not What's yeah. your thought? So um, for me, at this point in time, I think at least just the first to center portion, so <coughs> Lola's can potentially, because they're the only ones that potentially want to do something next week. Um, you know, I kind of have 
and en- envision something in my mind that doesn't require street closures for businesses when they are able to operate at some capacity inside, um, you know, looking at uh, ha- allowing them to use the parking stalls literally in front of their storefronts as kind of a temporary permanent patio where we don't have to have street closures. They can put tables in their parking stalls in front, keep that up. So whenever they're open, they can operate both sides. Again, that's um, something that we would talk with the business owners. Again, have another forum for the business owners to come down and and speak their minds on that issue. Yeah, kind of, yeah something along those lines. So um, those are things we will be taking to business owners to see if they're interested in something like that uh, when the time comes that they can open both inside, uh, have capacity inside their restaurant or bar. So this proposal just to close one block. Yeah, from first to center, um, just in case Lola's would like to have their outdoor patio. And that would be for- to do them all. Then that we, we still have the flexibility, I mean, yeah. If somebody requests it, it's already approved. Rather than otherwise, you have to call a special uh, meeting, get us back in here, yeah. just do yeah. it and get it over with. And if it doesn't um, take place, it doesn't take Mr. place. Mr. President, um, the, the resolution as written indicates that the, both these blocks would be closed. And if no one is going to be using a block um, from 2nd North to 3rd North, uh, we're going to have a street closed over the weekend. For no reason so i think that's what the city manager's concern is because this says it's going to be closed but we could amend the resolution to reflect if needed if used if utilized something like that we weren't going to put out the barricades this weekend just because there was no interest for it so the again this was all well one, one, one of the things is um for any business and again tell you that the city staff, and particularly Chris, I think have devoted an enormous amount of work and creativity into trying to help people out. And as he said, everyone is hamstrung by the state requirements. Everything from the number of people to the number of positions between the tables, calling in for reservations. Most of these business owners, I think, looked at it and said, we have to operate under those state guidelines, and right now it doesn't make sense for us. But the other part of this is, you know, if they want to occupy part of the street, they're going to need to apply for that. And this council can grant them that, but so far no one is doing that. So it's two steps. I mean, one is closing the street, but that doesn't give them the right to extend their premises until you have approved it. And if no one is asking for that right now, just because the street is closed doesn't mean that any of these bars can now go out there and start doing things, um, I guess, unless you're going to approve that. Uh, Well, I will say too. The difference, this isn't a resolution though. It's just a motion that we we could close it off. As I read it, resolution, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the before it's a resolution, and it says you will you do approve the temporary closure of Minnesota Street on those two blocks from Friday, 5:30 p.m. until 11 p.m. on Sunday, and then the same thing the next weekend. And so, um, again, this was all put together before. I mean, a lot of this stuff, uh, Michael and I found out this morning that a lot of business were going to pull out. But um, to Roger's point, actually, everyone that wanted to go in the street, as far as the street closure, they actually already had already filled out the public right of way form. So we do have their request to go um, into the street um, at this point. So in case they wanted to exercise that. So if, so if they if they want to continue with those. Mm-hmm even though apparently they've announced they're not really going to use them, Mm -hmm. but they still want their applications to be considered, then that concern would be addressed. Then, you know, it's something where, you know, we'd probably need to amend this resolution to somehow have it state that in the event that if the affected businesses were going to exercise the ability to use the right away under those permits, then the street would be closed. That's one way of dealing with it. Okay. 
I kind of I kind of like it a little cleaner. I mean, if we've got a business that that yeah. is willing and wants to do it, we Absolutely. allow that business and we approve that. And if we've got those businesses that have pulled out and said they don't want to do it, why would we authorize a street to be closed? They they know they don't want to do it. They've said they don't. They've pulled out. Yeah, so do what we can for the business that wants it. And if those other businesses want it, they come back and say they want it, I guess. I, I you know. I agree. I mean, you backed out. The opportunity was there. Right. We yeah. we we have really tried to help them, and they and you know, and I'm sure they appreciate that. But yeah. you know, financially, it's just not a good decision for them. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I will say they they all have expressed their appreciation to, to everything we've we've tried to do yeah, for them. Been very good. Yeah. And on just a note to the city manager, him and I have talked about it. I took many pictures of those park inlets mm -hmm. down the city. He's very, very positive down there. Mm -hmm. That I'd like to see come back to us in the near future. Yep. We've been talking about it for years. Yep, but I'd like to see it come back. Yep. Very easy to do and minimal cost to property owners, yep. or business owners, excuse me. Because mm. <coughs> I'm wondering if the popularity will increase. Like I said earlier, if one of the, the governor does allow restaurants to be open at half full, well, then going out to the street might financially make sense in a business plan. Potentially. Um, I mean, it certainly doubles your income, so yeah. So that's why I was thinking if we could pre-approve some of this, it wouldn't shorten the time, but we could call an emergency meeting if we had to, or if it, the timeline is right, we could just wait for the next. Yeah. Well, we'll know in two weeks. Yeah, two yeah. weeks mm -hmm. isn't. Yeah. In two weeks, we'll know when yeah. we come back to our we'll, next council we'll meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And we'll see if the governor lightens up on some of the restrictions, and then we'll move forward. Yeah, we, we've been fortunate enough that, you know, whenever the governor speaks, our council meeting is literally the next Tuesday. Yeah, so it's kind of yeah. wor it's kind of worked out that we can be ahead of the curve on a lot of things. Um, so we'll keep monitoring, monitoring the situation. And as we get more information, we'll pull in the business owners as well to get their take on, on what they would like to do. Um, so there is a cohesive plan presented to the council, and it's not one business trying to do something and another business trying to do something else. It's one cohesive plan that everyone's on board with. Um, and I will say the retailers, again, uh, downtown were really uh, on board with closing closing the street as well. So they, they showed their support uh, for the businesses as well. So my question to the city attorney and Councillor Fisher had brought it up to keep it clean. Do we just deny this at this time, Roger? And what, table it? If, as I understand it, the only impact as the businesses are expressing their intentions would be to Lola's. Right. Um, she still does have a patio area. Um, she has been operating her truck uh, on the street. It just would kind of cut down on some seating that she might otherwise use. But if that's the case, then and I think we're you know we're looking at a two week period here. That's all this resolution would apply to. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, if you were going to deny it, as I understand it, the only impact would be upon Lola's. The one thing that you might, and Chris might want to comment on this, uh, on the agenda, we also have the request for extensions, and some of these are, you know, going to be into the property that the licensee already owns. It's going to be behind their building or something like that. Uh, that would be different than granting a permit where they could go on to Minnesota Street. Right. Mm -hmm. If you don't right block away. the street, they're not going to be able for the next two weeks anyway. They're not going to be able to, you know, use Minnesota Street for their business. Yeah. Yeah. And, so and what I heard oh, um, about Lola's is they wanted the street closed this weekend. Potentially next weekend. Potentially next weekend. Yes, she's going to see this weekend how the the how Seating goes. Patrons are, want to mm -hmm. seat outside, uh, and then I'll meet with her on either Monday or Tuesday to see if she wants to, would potentially want to exercise the option to close so she can have that outside patio as described um, in the packet. So I guess if she's willing to want to do that, I would be willing to, I would think we'd want to accommodate that mm -hmm. yeah. within this resolution. Um, <coughs> so... Um, Next weekend, the June 3rd, no, the June 14th weekend? Or what weekend, do, what weekend does she want it, the option? Next weekend, which would be? The 7th. The 13th, so it'd be um, 
12th, 13th, and 14th. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'll take a stab at this. Um, offer the resolution, waive the reading, authorizing the request of restaurants and bars looking to extend liquor license to the new outdoor patios per the governor's executive order 2063 for um, what is the street first first north well actually this is 5.6 for the the street closure I portion the wrong one. Yeah, yeah, sorry you're, you're yeah one ahead one ahead oh shoot well that's not the right one. I thought I had the right one sorry Okay, here we go. Approve the partial closure of Minnesota Street from First North to Center Street. And that's the for the weekend of the 12th through the 14th? Yes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Uh, just uh, once again, so we're clear on this, that would be from 5.30 p.m. on June 12th until 11 p.m. on June 14th? Correct. Yes, with all of the conditions okay. that are listed. Yes. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Was that a resolution? No, it wasn't. Oh. That's what I said at the beginning. <laughs> Item 5.7 COVID 19 outdoor patio liquor license extension. Oops, here's the one. Uh, excuse me, Mr. President. I think this was a resolution. Not on the agenda, it wasn't. It should be first. It should, it should be. Should have been. That was. That, I'm looking was at the attachment. There was a resolution that was attached. So. Oh, okay. We'll make it a resolution. Sorry. We we do it. She. I'll offer the resolution. Waive the reading to authorize Center Street before. to First North, <laughs> the weekend of June 12th through the 14th. Yes. Second. We have a motion and a second. To offer resolution. Waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none. Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes, motion carried. <coughs> COVID-19 outdoor patio liquor license extension. Chris? Um, so again, this is going to go along with um, the executive order 2063. Uh, the only one that we'll, we will omit at this point in time will be social at 209 North Minnesota Street as they're not um, doing an outdoor patio at this time. Um, Lola's may or may not exercise that right. So again, you might be um, approving something that doesn't exist at some point. Uh, but Smiley's would like to extend, Plaza Garibaldi's uh, would like to extend the New Ulm Legion uh, would like to extend Lamplighter and Mona Lena. Um, the maps are attached. Pretty much everyone, with the exception of uh, Lola's, is going to be in their back patio um, area. Plaza Garibaldi's, again, is in the front of their building. As you drive down the street, you've seen it already constructed. Um, and so they were. I want to extend their liquor license to that area um, as per the governor's um, executive order to get uh, to sell alcohol and accommodate um, patrons in their restaurant at this time. Thank you, Chris. So we have a proposed action, but we really don't have a timeline on this proposed action. Uh, do we have a recommendation for that? Roger, do you have any input on that? I think, thank you, Councilor. We, we had discussed this, and uh, we had talked about maybe doing it the later of a certain date or the lifting of the executive order. Uh, so that would be something to, one, one way to handle it. The other thing would be, uh, this is set up to uh, be addressed by a resolution. And I would ask that you, whoever might take that action, please make sure that the conditions are included. Uh, we've got a number of different owners that this would apply to. Their situations are all unique. Uh, but we need to make sure that they're all complying with the requirements and that their extensions are as designated mm -hmm. because they have to, it's part of the state law is you've got to be able to identify the licensed premises. And so we've got that, um, you know, it's in the applications. We need to make sure that the conditions are clear that they apply 
to those areas uh, as designated. And also the other conditions that are at the end of the action item. Thank you, Roger. I'm, I'm assuming we'd also have the authority if we chose not to have it tied to COVID, but allowed, say for example, the governor would pull it all back on August 1st, that we could extend the license until basically the weather dependent so you couldn't sit outside anymore to help some of the restaurants maybe recoup a little bit because people like to sit outside. And, and I don't know if we wanna, my, my personal thought is maybe we don't wanna rush to shut that license down so quickly. And if the restaurants wanna keep open and it's working for them and, and they're gonna have to shut down when it becomes weather dependent anyway, but I'm not so sure if I wanna put a timeline on there. Well, I understand that. The other part of this, though, is that uh, this is getting into a new area. Right. And the you know, Joe Counselor came out during the discussions with the business owners. Uh, if we start having bars operating on Minnesota Street, I mean, normally, you know, they may be open until 2 a.m. This would have them closed, you know, at uh, initially we were talking some of them 9, some of them, you know, 11. Uh, there are people who live on Minnesota Street. Uh, I know across from us, there's families with children. Uh, if they've got their windows open or they're trying to sleep and there's a bar going on outside, they may not have any problem with it. But we haven't done this before, and you might get a lot of feedback on this. Uh, so to just leave it open-ended, you know, for the rest of the year or something like that or until October, and that we'll see how it all works. I kind of get what Roger's saying. I think let's get through this, you know, with this COVID and order it in the specialty. And then, you know, if we get enough uh, feedback from the community that they want to do some outdoor activities and let's review it at that time and then let's take leave it. it open. Correct. I'm fine with that too. So I'm going to go ahead and offer the resolution, wave the reading authorizing the restaurants uh, the request to restaurants and bars to extend their liquor license to new outdoor patio areas per the governor's executive order 20.63 second we have a motion and a second off the resolution waived reading any more discussion Chris? Uh, just one oh, with condition. oh, with all the conditions. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just one key point. I, I just wanted to point out, um, you know, and this is more for the Smiley's area. Um, they actually will only be operate. They'll be able to operate seven days a week, but um, Sunday through Thursday, um, they're actually only going to be able to open till nine because they are in a residential area. And then Friday and Saturday, they'll be open till 11 uh, to help keep the noise down uh, in that area. Okay. Thank you. I just had a quick question. When they um, when they get these patios set up, do we go and inspect them to make sure they have all the components that that they're in compliance, or yeah. how are we working with that? Um, I'm going to go out and uh, hand deliver kind of the COVID guidelines. I think Michael found a really good one uh, and sent it to me that we can hand out that as the guidelines really spelled out, um, so they can have that information available. You know, if you said Plaza Garibaldi kind of has theirs already up. Um, yeah, you know, and I, Smiley's will get there soon, so. Okay, thank you. Any more qu questions? Just to maybe another comment, because I think we're moving on to different topics, is I know, Chris, you've done a huge amount of work on both these projects, and, and it shows in the details and the work, so I want to thank you for your work yeah. on that, because I know it took up a lot of time. Yeah. So no, I'll make sure we recognize that. Yeah, yeah it, this is just a time for all, all of us, just as leaders, to step up and really yep. help the business community. So again, you know, it's it's a tool. You know, it's a shame that you know business weren't able to take advantage of it. But moving forward, this is something that we can just do and kind of see, you know, how the business community gauges looking mm -hmm. closing down M Minnesota Street for maybe an event or two, you know, and just push forward because I think when this is all said and done, we're going to need something pretty big to start drawing people back downtown so sounds good <coughs> thank you finance director please call the roll councillor mack yes councillor schultz yes councillor fisher yes councillor christian yes president schmitz yes <laughs> motion carries <laughs> <Change Sorry>. <laughs> 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 item 5.8 subordinate <coughs> loan made by dlc manufacturing and fabrication incorporated dave 
Um, members of the City Council, um, this request has been made by David Duvall on behalf of DLC Manufacturing and Fabrication. <coughs> They're located um, in the Industrial Park at 24 Sampson Street. Uh, they recently um, closed on a loan with the City of New Ulm uh, this past April for $250,000. Um, as part of their financing, um, the original, there was only one uh, entity that was providing financing for the project, and that was Bank Midwest. Bank Midwest is now taking part of that financing and transferring it to the SBA. Because the SBA is a new entity, they're going to want to be in front of the city, and so we aren't necessarily talking about new money we're just talking about mm. you know a split in the old money mm. if <coughs> you can use that terminology so we've made um, you know subordinations like this in the past okay. yep thank you Dave any questions for Dave entertain a motion I'll approve the request for David DeWald on behalf of DLC Manufacturing and Fabrication Incorporated to subordinate a loan. Let's see. I'll second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? I'm going to just ask a question. Did uh, they meet the requirements for fulfilling the job creations? You know, so we're aware of that <coughs> for their loan? The job did creation requirements. Did they um, meet the minimum job creations? And have they met them? Yes. Um, they have two years from the date of the loan to meet those job creation requirements. So um, it'll pr be sometime in uh, 2022 when those become active, and that's when they would have to be in compliance. Okay. Is that something we audit then? Yes, we okay. do. Perfect. Stop up in my office sometime. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Any other questions, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item number 6.1, accept a list of claims paid in the amount of $1,353,503.87 and approve a list of claims to be paid in the amount of $1,590,503.87 1 I'll move it. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. We have a addendum item. Yep, I'll offer a motion to suspend the rules and add an addendum to our meeting. You have a second? Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. I'm waiting Any for it to load. <laughs> I was so, all so busy. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <laughs> item number 1.1, 1 .1, Kaiser Off Sidewalk Cafe Extension of Liquor License. Chris? Okay. So um, this is back to kind of Roger's original point. Kaiser Hoff would like to do a, a sidewalk patio uh, in front of their uh, establishment. Um, before you, you had the original drawing that was submitted and then um, a drawing that I created to kind of flesh out the idea of what was really going on. Um, again, I think they could probably have one table um, in the 14-foot sections and then three along the 33-foot section, just keeping in line with kind of the six-foot distancing at this point. Um, they their current insurance um, has been given to us to um, to go into that sidewalk patio so they've kind of submitted everything they need to at this point uh, and then in July I think they are switching insurance carriers so we will get that updated one to cover the patio as well and then um, like Roger said next week we'll we'll talk about potentially having that roped off or fenced off Anybody have any questions, concerns? Or well, you just said the word roped off, but we're not requiring anybody else to be roped off at this point. At this point, yeah. So this, I was just saying next week, well, okay. well that'll be brought before you if you want to go down that road and have all the sidewalk patios fenced slash roped off. But as it stands, if they wanted to do it this weekend, they would be able to just put the tables out. Okay. If approved. Sounds good. Any other questions? Entertain a motion? I don't know if we have one. 
Thank I'll you. offer the resolution and waive the reading to allow the Kaiser off 221 North Minnesota Street to uh, operate a sidewalk calf adjacent to their prop building within the sidewalk right away per approved guidelines and to authorize the extension of the Kaiser off annual on sale intoxicating and Sunday liquor license onto the sidewalk calf area. Second. We have a motion and a second off resolution waived reading. Any more discussion? Chris? Uh, just one more quick comment. Um, you know, I, I did want to take just take a second to just recognize Michael at the chamber um, for helping out with a lot of this stuff. He, he really stepped up to the plate and helped help the city and the businesses. Uh, and, you know, I failed to mention it you know, earlier, but I just wanted to take a moment to, to recognize the chamber for the work that they did in trying to get this set up as well. Sounds good. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Any more discussion? Seeing none, Finance Director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Christian? Yes. President Schmidt? Yes, motion carries. With no more business, meeting adjourned. <laughs>